Hey there, I'm Joshua Bardwell, and I just want to take 30 seconds of your time before we get into the video in case someone has stumbled across this video randomly and doesn't realize what the context is. This is a playlist of videos teaching you how to build a FPV, first person view freestyle or racing drone from start to finish. If you've stumbled in in the middle, Go down to the video description, there's a playlist link, start at the beginning of the playlist and work your way through. If you are working your way through this video, I want to remind you that there is a Discord server, a Discord chat server uh, for Quad Camp Online. There's a channel over there where we provide support uh, for the people who are working through this project. If you have any questions, you can ask them down in the YouTube comments, absolutely, but if you need a little bit more real-time help, you maybe will get better luck over in the Discord server. Link in the video description. I also want to remind you, thanks to Rotor Riot for helping make this project a reality. And if you are thinking of working your way through this project, you can get all of the equipment for, to build the quadcopter in just one credit card swipe from the Rotor Riot store. Yeah, you can buy the stuff elsewhere as well. One piece here, one piece there. Pay too much for shipping. Accidentally buy the wrong thing. You get it all. And there's a link to that down in the video description. On with the video. And we're back, and I've got all four of the motors soldered up. And my wire routing is, it's not bad, I'm not, I'm not, it's not the best I ever did. You got a little bit of extra wire here, but it looks okay. And most importantly, each of these is separate and distinct from the other. If you've bridged it, you're gonna fry something when we first go to fly. So definitely just eyeball these and make sure that there's no solder bridges, there's no little strands of wire, connecting them they should be separate and distinct from each other and if you're thinking well i'll be super clever and i'll get my multimeter out and i'll do a continuity test that actually won't work the the individual motor wires have continuity within the motor i know that sounds weird but it's true so if you test for continuity it will be there that's not a problem that's because that's how the motor works you just gotta eyeball it the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solder on my XT60 pigtail connector. And this is an XT60 that I've made myself at home, but I believe that the kit that you got from Rotor Riot should have a pre-made XT60 ready to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some fresh solder here. There's no actually no solder on mine. The pre-made one will probably have a little bit of solder on it, but it's a good idea to add a little more solder. And the reason for that is that the solder they put on in the factory is usually lead free and it doesn't flow really well. So let's get my soldering iron heated up and I'll show you how I put a little bit of extra fresh solder on here. What I like to do for these larger joints is just set the soldering iron down on the table and then I have two hands free to work with various things. Now with larger wire, like is used on battery connectors, you, you need a lot of heat to get a good joint. My soldering iron is at 800 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about, I think, 400 degrees Celsius. You may even want to turn it up to 850, which is 400, 450-ish. Well, anyway, I'm not sure my math works out right, but I basically crank my iron up to the max for these big joints. And using a heavier tip would also be good, but I hate changing the tips on my iron, so I just make do. And uh, if you're using a very, very fine tip, like a pen, like a conical tip, you're not gonna, this is not gonna work. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna touch the wire to the tip of the iron, and then I'm gonna add just a little bit of wet solder, and that's gonna help the heat flow into the joint. A dry iron tip doesn't transmit heat well. And what I want to see is I want to see that wire soaking up the solder itself. And if you're just touching the solder to the tip, of course the solder is going to melt, but that's not actually getting the solder into the wire, which is what you really want. A little bit of wet solder and just wait. I'm touching the solder to the wire here, waiting for it to kind of start soaking in. Come on now. There we go. The wire got hot and it takes the solder in. So now the wire is nice and soldered, tinned, now, if you're sitting there and your wire is just not taking the solder, then something isn't right. Heat's not getting into the into the wire. 
When the, when the, everything's working right, the wire will get hot and the wire itself will melt and suck the solder in. Uh, if that's not happening for you, you may want to figure out what's up with your soldering situation because the next joint we're going to do is the one that is going to demand the most of your setup. And that is this main XT60 lead. Now the way we're going to do this one is we're going to solder the wires in sideways. C can you see the mistake I just made right there? Plus, minus, minus, plus. Red is plus, black is minus, and I got them backwards. Don't make that mistake or the first time you plug your quad in, your smoke will come out and all your work will have been for nothing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of fresh solder here. And what you can see is, you see how the, the solder is not really melting? This ground pad is the hardest one to solder. It takes a lot of heat to solder it. If you put your soldering iron up against it, what you want to see is that everything becomes liquid. You can see it's really not doing that. And we finally got it to sort of flow. Again, this is the part where if your technique or your equipment is not up to snuff, you will find out and you will struggle. Don't just bang your head against a wall. Stop, back away, let's figure out what's wrong. Maybe if you are a member of Quad Camp Online, go ahead and ask at Quad Camp Online or something like that. Let's figure out what's wrong. Don't just struggle and struggle and struggle and finally kind of get it to stick and then move on and you have your quad fall out of the air. Now I think the best way to do this is to actually come in from the underside. So I'm going to tin the underside as well. And you'll see I've kind of filled in those holes a little bit. That's okay. And I'm going to come up from the underside. What my goal is going to be is to heat the pad until the whole thing becomes liquid and then insert wire into the slot. Let it solidify. You want to see the wire become liquid as well as there we go. That was a good flow right there. That was a good flow right there. That's what I want to see. The whole thing became liquid and flowed together into one joint. This is the point in the build where I like to do a smoke test because if I've screwed any part of this up, there's no sense continuing. I need to back out and fix it. So let's double check that the polarity on the XT60 is correct. Red goes to plus, black goes to minus. And let's get our multimeter out. We're gonna put the multimeter into continuity test function. And that's the, the mode where when you touch the probes together, you get a beep. And we're just going to check, and we should not have continuity between the two pr prongs of the XT60. Now you may notice just there I got a tiny little beep, and that's okay. Hang on, let me make it do it again. We got a tiny beep there because the capacitors here charge up, and when they're charging up, it there's a tiny beep. But we see we don't get any beeps after that 
just that one little tiny beep at the beginning. If you have a beep when you touch the XD60 uh, Pro uh, pins, then there's continuity and you should not plug in your battery. You should figure out where you've got a bridge, like you could have a solder bridge here on the underside or something like that. So do not plug in your battery at that point. Alrighty, this is the point where we plug in a battery. If you have a smoke stopper, this is a good time to use the smoke stopper as well. I can't find my smoke stopper right now, so we're going to go for it. And that's what you want to hear, just those three beeps. And what you can do is, you may see the motors twitch a little bit. If you just pinch the motor and plug in, you should hear the mo you should feel the motor vibrate. And you can check each of the four motors to be sure that they're vibrating. Good. Yep. Okay, now that indicates that the ESC is basically talking to the motors and we're good to proceed.